Great. Thank you. Uh, what we're going to talk about is, it says Antarctic adventure, but the adventure for us was flying down and actually started in southern Argentina. Next slide. So this was what the weather was like in October uh, 2017. This is sitting in our back patio. And we, next. OK. Oh. Craig, that's very distracting over there. No, 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 you, you can hold it, up, hold it up for a second. Yes. <laughs> okay. Next. Okay. So we we um, drove down from to JFK and flew down and eventually ended up in Ushuaia, Argentina. And I was just talking to a man here tonight, and he said he was there um, 30, 40 years ago, and there were about 5,000 people. Now there are probably 45 or 50,000 people. Next. And when we landed, uh, we had the first day in Ushuaia, and we just walked around the harbor. And these are some of the birds we saw. Dolphin gulls, which I, I think are some of the prettiest gulls in the world. This is an immature. That's not one of the prettiest. And this is a, a, cape, uh, a kelp gull that looks like our great black back gulls. And then the uh, dark-bellied synclodes, and these were right along the water. And these they uh, made their living eating off the seaweed and the different bugs that were down there. And this is a uh, rock shag or rock cormorant. And this is Ushuaia, and we have not been to Scandinavia, but this is sort of reminds me of what you might see in Scandinavia. Um, just these. It's now uh, become quite a tourist uh, town, and it's the, the kickoff place for people going to the Antarctic Peninsula, also going to the Falklands and to South Georgia. Hey, Gary, are you getting feedback? Can you turn it down? Uh, Keep your hands away from uh, Ron, how do you turn this down? Do you know? Uh, on the dais, there's a little volume knob. I'm getting feedback. Okay. Okay. Here we go. On here. Well, I can't. I can't do anything. Okay. Oh. Okay. So volume down. Hello. 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 Is that better? Is that is that less painful? No. More, not yet. Okay. Try. Hot tub now. Now? Is that better? Okay. Okay. Well, we know where the knob is now. If we have any problems, just uh, scream again. And so we were tourists. It was a surprisingly nice day, around 40 degrees. And these are different little huts here of the different trips you can take out of uh, Ushuaia. We're still getting the feedback. Yeah. What? Oh, okay. hurt yourself with that thing. <laughs> so, so this is here, and this is our with the hotel that we stayed in right here, just not on the main shore. And then we, uh, in the <coughs> afternoon, we walked around a little bit more, saw these beautiful oyster catchers, Magellanic oyster catchers. As you can see, we were really into the birding, and that's one of the big reasons we were going there. These are upland geese. This is the male with the white head. This is the female here with the, and this is the kelp goose. This is the only kelp goose we saw on the whole trip. And so, oop. And then when we went around to the far side of the harbor and there were crested ducks here, and then we saw flying steamer ducks. And they're called steamer ducks because of the way they, they actually propel themselves. They, they actually use their wings to, uh, to move along in the water. And these guys here uh, can fly, and later we'll see some in the Falklands that have a different characteristic. And the crested duck here, you can see the crest on the back of it. 
as you walked around the town, it was just it was all these beautiful sites. The uh, Ushuaia was originally, or maybe not originally, but was used by Argentina as a prison colony. And that was one of its big industries. It was a great place to send prisoners. They were able to uh, find work for them, and you couldn't escape to anywhere. <laughs> so, and this was a, just a, a tug that had gone aground years and years ago in the harbor, and they decided, it turned out it was going to be more expensive to take it off the rocks and repair it, so they just left it there. This is another one of the rock shags, and that was actually had a nest on the uh, tugboat. This is looking back. This is our hotel again. This is a southern lapwing down here. And this is this whole end of this whole side of Ushuaia is actually the end of the Andes mount Mountains. And it, actually, on, on the main continent, it's the end of it. And what happens is it continues around and becomes the Falkland Islands and becomes South Georgia and goes down to the Arctic Peninsula. So it's a continuation. And the real beauty of having the, um, the Andes here is that there are birds that you can find near Ushuaia that typically, if you were going to be looking for a similar bird in, let's say, uh, Ecuador or Peru, they might be at 12 or 14,000 feet. Here, you can pick them up at you know, 5,000 feet or 6,000 feet. This is just, uh, we did the Taurus thing. We, this is a, a splayed of half of a, a lamb, basically, that they're barbecuing, and they were getting that ready for the dinner that night. This is, and then the next day we went out and there, uh, Marcelo de Cruz was our guide here. And there's somebody else I talked to earlier that is going with the same group we did, and they'll probably run into Marcelo de Cruz. And he's a, a, one of the two really good local guides at Ushuaia. And he took us up to these, uh, this place called Garibaldi Pass. You can drive up, and, and this is the pass here. And we put on snowshoes and hiked up into the snow. Actually, we were parked right down into about this area here and hiked up. Next one. And what we were looking for, this is a yellow bridled finch. You can see the yellow here on the bridle. We'll see the white bridled finch later. And this is just sort of the atmosphere that you're getting into up here. This was sort of like an island of vegetarian uh, of vegetation that had, we were there in their spring. So that is just beginning to melt. And what we're looking for is a certain bird called a uh, white-bellied seed finch. And, what? Seed snipe. Seed snipe. I'm sorry, you're right, seed snipe. And uh, it's written right up there. OK. <laughs> Good. Yeah, where are my glasses? Yeah, oh, God, yeah. Uh, and, and here it is, and this is a this is a bird that that a lot of people miss, that a lot of people don't see, and we were lucky enough to get it. Um, the, the super, the, super yeah. camouflage. It was one of those birds. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been on a trip like seeing a paraki or something, where you'll be in a circle and the guide will say. Anybody want to see a paraki? And everybody goes, yeah, yeah, we'd like to see one. And he said, well, it's in the middle of the circle. <laughs> and, we, and we've had that happen before. You know, you say, oh, my god, there it is. You know, But th these were, uh, were difficult to, to see when they uh, sat still and squatted down. But we had a nice sunny day. And it, it was uh, quite a good hike. This is a hidden lake in Garibaldi Pass. You can, you can see how steep the, uh, the mountains are here. And after we did that tour, we um, did the traditional, I don't know if you've been on a lot of international bird trips or big bird trips. Quite often you get off the airplane, like in um, Trinidad, and the first place they take you is the sewer treatment plant yes. or, or the dump. In this case, uh, coming back from Ushuaia, they took us to the dump, and we saw 
I believe there's four different kinds of carrot carrots. Three carrot carrots. Three carrot carrots. Yeah. Okay. And this is the southern crested carrot carrot. This is a, uh, a view the next morning. Yeah. This, so here we are eating breakfast, and there's a sunrise, obviously, in the east. But. And then uh, that next day, what we did was when we went down, we knew we were going to do this cruise. We spent uh, two days birding in Ushuaia. And we'll quite often do this for a couple of reasons. One is that we get to see a lot more birds and a lot of different terrain. But also, we get there two days before, and if there's some some mistake where you, where you uh, have a, a problem with the airplane or travel, um, the boats don't wait for you. Mm -hmm. you know, they, actually, we had one woman who... Had to come in in uh, the Falklands. She missed the departure. Yeah, so, which ends up being a little bit more expensive. This is the Tierra del Fuego National Park, and this is where the end of the, of the highway is. Yeah. So you go and there's Trans the Trans-American, and there's a... Uh, a parking lot and a sign, and you're at, you're at the end of the road. You, you, you can't go any further south. <coughs> Good one. Okay. You can on it. Uh, so th so these are a couple of our target birds. These are uh, Magellanic woodpeckers, and this is the male, and this is the female. And it doesn't. These feathers on the back of the head were just spectacular. This is the about the same size as. You know some of our big woodpeckers. You know they, as the you know, pileated size, maybe even a little bit bigger. Yeah, these are a pair of black-headed swans. Oh, black-necked. Yep. Yeah. Got to learn how to read. Yeah. <laughs> but but these were uh, these were sort of fun. We were out there and it was really windy and they just came slowly uh, swimming by us. We saw upland geese in several different places and so we'll keep popping a couple of pictures of them. This is the black-faced ibis, and um, I don't know, we've seen a number of ibises around the world, and uh, to me, this was probably one of the most spectacular. You know, it is just uh, the different colors, and the, uh, it, 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 it's, it seemed a little bit bigger than the other ibises, and it may be just that it was standing more up and down. It didn't quite have the same jizz as some of the other ibises that we have, in, Florida or the southern states. Uh, Gaston was our guide in the Tierra del Fuego, and he's a young man who was just going down there for about uh, uh, for six months, for just for one season, and met the love of his life, and has now has two or three kids. and <laughs> And if you are going to Ushuaia, he or or the other or Marcelo are, are both excellent guides to get a hold of. And this is right at the, uh, the park near the end of the, uh, end of the road. And they have a nice boardwalk there. You can see some of the local birds. And we're lucky enough to see a couple of these uh, austral pygmy owls. They uh, are really small and just incredibly uh, attentive to you. They really look you in the eye and sort of look around, but they're very, uh, very nice little birds. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah, th th that was taken right out of the uh, the car window. Now the camera I use is just a uh, a Canon Power Shot. Uh, I don't have the long lenses or anything else. Just a small little camera. Uh, it's one that I can hold in my hand and hold my binoculars at the same time. So I don't have interchangeable lenses or anything else. So. And, and this is a uh, blackish oyster catcher, and not to be confused with the black oyster catcher that we get on the West Coast. Yeah, so, it's a, it, yeah, this is the blackish uh, oyster catcher. And they, uh, I don't know, and this is a bird that you could also get fairly close to. The birds didn't, didn't seem to be really wary of people. I, I don't think they really get hunted down there. And this is another uh, flying flying uh, steamer duck. This uh, this one happens to be out here. Um, they tend to have a little bit shorter wings, even the even the flying ones. Next, 
This is a this is a, one of Kathy's meals. Uh, no, no, there's a beer. No, there's a beer in front of it, so it's probably my my. And then uh, one of the attractions is the Presidio, and it's the old uh, prison that they had, and it it was closed as a prison probably about. 15 or 20 years ago, and they filled it with, with local art exhibits and also with uh, local history. They also have um, a, a lot of little uh, ship models and pictures of boats that were important in, uh, in the Antarctic and discovery of the area. Yep. And this is a... Uh, whoa. <laughs> Not used to those. That's, uh, this is the place where we ate twice. The guy was just great. He was uh, from Italy, 82 years old. We, we couldn't converse in words, but we uh, had, had a great time with him. And here's, here's our trip. So we have flown down to Ushuaia. We spent two days. We've been in the Andes. We've been in the Tierra del Fuego. And now we're going to go up to the Falkland Islands. And then we're going to swing around here to South Georgia Island. Then we're going to go down here through the Scotia Sea. And we're going to go to the uh, past Elephant Island and down onto the peninsula. Now, uh, if, you, if you're in Ushuaia, you don't tell people you're going to the Falklands. <laughs> you, you tell them you're going to the Maldives. And actually, one of our uh, people on the trip came back with a big Falkland shirt and wore it, into, wore it into a bar and he, he literally had to go and buy another shirt. They wouldn't, they wouldn't serve him. They, they wouldn't serve him. You know, with the, they're, they're very touchy about yeah, Yes, yes, and, and rightfully so probably. And um, th this is sort of the, the ledger board up in the, uh, up in the pilot house. There are 42 crew, 23 staff, and 63 passengers for a total of 128. But there were, there could have been as many as I think 92 passengers, so we were lucky that we were one of the first ships of the year going out, and it was a little bit early. We ended up um, being the end of October into November. We ended up seeing a lot of things that other people don't see, and we missed a lot of things that other people do see. So you know, our our view of it is. Yeah, a, a little bit skewed. So this is uh, leaving Ushuaia. The Beagle Canal is that water away. Yeah. And then this is the, the old prison, the Presidio, and this is the Argentina uh, Naval Station. And actually one of, the, one of those uh, subs uh, sunk about a month after we were there. Yes. Uh, the cruise was 19. 19 days. Yeah. So we got on, on board ship. This is our first view of the ship here, at the academic IOFI. This is uh, Maria, who was uh, sort of the, the number two person from uh, One Oceans, which is a Canadian company that we traveled with on the boat. We ended up uh, going through a company called Rock Jumpers, which is out of South Africa. And we, the first thing we had to do was do the, you know, the lifeboat drill and everybody get their, their stuff on just for safety point things. And this is our cabin over here. You can see that it's, we got the luxury cabin. <laughs> and actually, we, we didn't spend that much time in the cabin. And we ended up uh, sharing a bathroom, too, which, which worked out very well. And we spent a full day um, going towards uh, the Falklands. And we spent a lot of time up above the bridge on this uh, big platform looking out, looking for our seabirds, like this uh, Southern Royal Albatross down here. And this is uh, David, who was uh, the, the head man from One Oceans, a nice Canadian company. And it, it's a, this is a trip where you go ashore, you see wonderful things, and then you're 
on the ship for a while. You know, it's, it's not a it's not a continual um, pack full of activities all the time. They were very good about having programs on it. Um, they had a place sort of in the belly of the ship where we would go down, and they would have uh, talks every day, and we called it the low oxygen room. Uh, Kathy would. Kathy fell asleep virtually every time we went down there. <laughs> you know, I'd look over and there. And uh, this is the equipment or the mudroom. Uh, this ship and its sister ship were built at, uh, for the Russians in Finland, and it was a transmitter and receiver uh, ship for the Cold War. And they were built in 19, I believe, 87. And then they. Uh, and then, the, and then the, uh, the Berlin Wall went down, and they were no longer really functional. These are our life jackets here, and they're really narrow and pretty thin. They put them on fairly tightly, and they're activated by getting wet. So, so they don't look big, but when you get in the water, they, they say they look, they'll really get big. Here they are again here. We, ne we never saw one blow up because nobody ever fell in the water, but would have been a nice experiment, maybe. <laughs> okay, so we were coming into the uh, into the Falklands, and we're coming uh, from the west to the east. And on the upper left-hand corner is uh, West Falkland Island, uh, and that was going to be our first stop. And as we got up in the in the morning, this is what we saw here coming into the Falklands, and the island we were on was this low one over here. And we got in the, uh, in our, our little zodiacs. This and was the one landing where we had a dock to climb out onto. Everything else was uh, rocks or shore or breaking waves. We can slow down a little bit. What was the temperature about now? I would say it was maybe 10 degrees. No. 10 degrees uh, Celsius. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Uh, no, it was around freezing most of the time. We, around 32 most we, of the time. We don't always agree on things. <laughs> <laughs> same, same trip, different yeah, perspective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the two trips we went on were very nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we got off at this uh, little uh, farm, is what it used to be. and I. I think they made it, I'm not sure what they had there before. It was probably a sheep farm. And they had, had these great old buildings. Ready? Yeah. And we climbed over the, uh, over the island to the other side because we're trying to get to a rookery. So this is uh, looking back where we came in. And a lot of people, we have not been to Scotland, but a lot of people said with the gorse and stuff, it reminded them of the uh, Scottish terrain. <coughs> and uh, on the way over, we saw this long-tailed meadowlark. So if you can imagine our meadowlark with its whole breast just bright red, and they're just, you, you agree with that, Susan? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. And they're just, they're a, a great little bird. And again, they're not really bothered that by much, so you can get fairly close to them. And we're going, we're over the island, and we're going to go down over this hill, and there's a rookery. And it's filled with southern rockhopper penguins and black-browed albatross. And I'm not sure why they nest together unless it's just such an ideal place. It's a cove that comes in, and I think it really catches the wind, the prevailing wind. So it's easy for them to get on and off their nests, for them to come in. So this uh, rockhopper penguin was probably uh, from here me, me to Jim, you know, and it, they're they're just that that close. They, you know, they have trails where you have to stay on, and you're not supposed to bother the birds. But it doesn't seem to. I, 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 you're not I, supposed to go within five feet of the birds, but the birds don't know the rule. Yeah, <laughs> they'll, they'll come closer to you. So this is what it was like looking down from our little pathway here. So we're up here on this path, and all these little mud mounds are what the, uh, 
what the albatrosses are, are, are uh, nesting on. And they have pretty much um, paired up and are just beginning to lay eggs at this point. And the rockhoppers would steal mud from the albatross nest to build their nest, and it was sort of like a battle of yeah. the mud. And, and uh, you, you probably have seen the pictures, but they, but they really do hop. You know, this, like this. They look like a little wind-up toy. toy. And this is actually a, uh, a, a mating ritual that the albatross go through. They were, it was almost embarrassing. They were going on it for quite a while there. <laughs> and this is a picture of Kathy with, a, with the albatross near him. I th thought this was interesting, getting close up to their eye. Wow, that's a very nice picture of the nest. Oh, yep. Yeah. And, and you, and you wonder, how, how do they design a bird like this? You know, they, uh, you know, what, what do they do? How, how do they get this little, uh, little flip here? You know, on it. And, but I, but I guess if you're the right person, that's very attractive. You know, that's, yeah. yeah. And then we were hiking back. And this is uh, we were on a higher trail. There was another group on a lower trail, and we uh, got the. The grass wren, which is a just a pretty little wren. Then the uh, striated uh, caracaras, and, and they've got this beautiful, almost like a golden eagle, look on the back of their neck, and you can't really see it well, but this here is a, a mouse or a mole that they've been harrying and uh, been bothering. Is that moss that the rock or? Uh, uh, I, it sort of is, vegetation. yeah, it is a rot moss, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of moss. Yeah. And, and when we get to the, when we got to the Falklands, we didn't see another tree until we got back to Ushuaia. Yeah, so this is, there's no trees. And as, we, after we got back, before we got on the boat, we um, went into the little farmhouse and they had this whole um, display of sweets that, they gave us it and hot tea and coffee, and it was just such a nice little thing. And and it reminds me of a like a small main cottage, or uh, or maybe something out on Cape Cod where they said, "Oh, we got another baby. We need another little room." You know, said, so, "No, we need another room here." And it, it was just very. Uh, so, if, very can any of you recognize on top of the green roof what bird is up there? They're turkey vultures. Yeah. Oh, it says it. Never yeah. mind. I couldn't see from here. Yeah. So th this is our boat here, the Academic Iofi. And this is still from that same island looking back. And this is us, uh, another crew that followed us coming back to the boat. One thing nice about only having 62 people is that we didn't absolutely, absolutely inundate every place that we showed up at. You know, they, and I, and I, I don't know for an absolute fact, but I believe that what they have is, especially when you get down to the Antarctic Peninsula, they have sort of a quota of how many people can be, or how many boats, or how, you know, how many people can be ashore at one time. And I think on the bigger boats, they can't even have the whole boat empty. Sometimes they've got to do it in two shifts, and you're only allowed a certain amount of time at each landing. You know, and that, that, that way they are. Uh, and we had to do a major cleaning of our clothes between different spots. They had vacuums that you had to <coughs> vacuum, especially the Velcro, to keep seeds from moving from island to island. Yeah. And yes. Yeah, yeah they were very careful about that. Yeah. And so with the, our next one was right, right north of West Point Island called Carcass Island. And this was a, a very flat terrain. And we got up and walked walked a little ways and came across uh, Magellanic penguins, and they make their living and live in, in holes. So they're gonna be nesting in holes down here. And this is about the size of them. So, yeah, they are big. They, okay. 
And then we saw some more uh, Magellanic oyster catchers, which I really love. This, this guy looks a little bit small here, but yeah, might be a young guy. <coughs> and then on the other side of the island, there's this beautiful long beach, and it just looks like one of those places that you'd want to spend your summer at. Actually, I, I think there's room if you're in the back. I think if you want to just take a second, if you want to come out here and stand on the other side, you might be able to see better. Okay. Oh, um, what I'm holding is a whalebone. And the, the beach was not littered with uh, whale bones, but up on, the, um, up on the high tide line, you know, they're, they're definitely spread out around there. And we were, during the trip, and we'll see several other pictures of whale bones, but they were pretty prominent around there. Nice thing about sitting down on the beach here, you'd see the uh, penguins uh, swimming in, swimming in, and then hopping up and then walking up the shore to get to their nesting areas. It's another upland goose family. And these are the flightless uh, Falkland steamer ducks. And if you look at their wings, look how short it is from the, uh, you know, from, from the wrist back to the, uh, the primaries. And so th these guys just can't fly. And what they do is they, they, they go like a paddle boat. And they can go fairly fast, not, not extremely fast, but there were no predators there for them, and so they evolved this way. Excuse me, you have another photo here. Yeah, and this is a, uh, called a snowy sheath bill, and we saw these. Uh, this is really one of my favorite birds of the whole trip. Uh, here you have a bird that lives in Antarctica and in the, uh, the real southern oceans. It's really cold, and they live right on the shore. And they, um, it, it, and they, they can't float in the water. You, know, you, you never see them in the water. They always have to land on land. And they make their living eating penguin poop. <laughs> yeah, it is how they, how they make their living. You know, they, the penguins, I guess, aren't perfect digesters. And they've got a lot of fish in there. And these guys make their whole living eating penguin poop. So. And this is the uh, Gentoo penguin, with a little sort of a nun's cap up top here. Yep. And here's a Gentoo gathering nesting material. And these, um, and these the Gentoo penguins will make their nests on a, a flat area with a whole, whole group of them for protection. Well, they say protection, but they're like all the penguins there. I'm not sure if it's all the penguins, but they go and they they, well, one's getting nesting material here, the other one will be stealing the nesting material that he had the last time. But again, here's one sitting on a nest. Here's a, here's the, uh, the Gentoo penguin um, colony here, here, and here. And these holes here are the Magellanic penguin <coughs> holes where they're uh, living underground. So they're, they're there in the exact same environment and they have two different ways of living. And here they are, here's a couple of them in their little hovel in their nest, and there's another one right at the, the mouth of their nest. And here's Kathy, this is, shows you how sort of flat that hole, well, rolling, but it was uh, probably all sandbar at one point that had grown up. Um, not for not for a lot of the birds. Uh, there there is a bird coming up that I'll tell you about. This one here. It's called the Cobb's wren, and this can only survive on islands that have no rats. And so they've been able to make sure that there aren't rats on certain islands. And we're lucky enough to see a pair of them here. But they. Um, you know, they're ground nesters. Well, everything's a ground nester there because you, you don't have trees. And, um, and, the, and the, the rats really cause quite a bit of havoc with them. And then we're back on the boat and we went overnight. Oh, this is the kayaks. One of the options of 
going to Antarctica with rock jumpers or with this um, One Oceans is that there's a kayaking option. So um, as we went through several different harbors, the people would uh, get into their dry suits and their full equipment and go out into the kayaks at the same time that we were going ashore. So we're going from West Falkland over to Stanley here. And this is coming into Stanley Harbor here. This was a dolphin that we had uh, twirling in front of the boat as we went in. Oh, we had to put the British flag up on the yes. ship yep. to go in. And then we went to uh, Gypsy Cove, which is uh, south of uh, Stanley, which was really a, a nice little different place, quite, quite windblown with beautiful beaches. We saw a new bird for us was the brown hooded gulls. And then uh, these shags were actually nesting right down here. And right here, there was a um, was a, 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 there was a black crown, <coughs> black crown night heron <laughs> nesting. So it was just it was Which we have here in Vermont. <laughs> right. It, it was just really wonderful. The the beauty of this trip was simply being in places and just being in the environment that was afforded to you is just so different than what we've seen. This is a dark faced uh, ground tyrant. Of course the. Uh, the flycatchers fly catch, fly have to be uh, ground birds in this location, and we and this is the the white uh, white bridled finch. And we had the yellow bridled finch earlier. Yeah, this is the rufous chested plover, and it's also called a dotterel, is the is the name of it, and this, I, th I think this is one. This is one of my top two or three shorebirds. It's just such a, a, a great looking bird. It's um, smaller than a um, black belly plover, you know, but still a uh, fairly good size. And then we went down to the shore again and saw uh, two banded plovers. And there, there are wrecks sort of, um, if, if you look carefully, there are wrecks in several different places. Uh, the Baird Sandpiper, which we get out in Addison. And you can tell that because of the primaries are longer than the tail. Another blackish oyster. This was right in downtown Stanley, looking over the, uh, over the boardwalk. And this is just a little bit of the architecture. It's a pretty, pretty harsh there. And these are the two ships, the academic Iofi and the academic Sergei Vivilov. The, the picture before had those big whale horns in it. Oh. oh, yeah. Do you want to go? Yeah. 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 The the Do you want to comment on that, Susan? The oh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful um, sculpture there in front of the church. Yeah, right here. With the British telephone. <laughs> And then we were back on the boat, and we're going to be on the boat for a couple of days because we're going to South Georgia Island at this point. And you can see here it's out in the wind. It's uh, getting pretty cold. The, 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 this is a, uh, a Cape petrel, and it, it was... the most predominant seabird that we saw. Yeah. What's the wingspan on that? Uh, it's not that, I'd say... Maybe 30 inches at the max. At the max, yeah, yeah. They're not. It's not like the albatross, which are huge. This is fairly small, and they were, they would swing in and out in front of the boat or behind the boat. And uh, somebody described it as a um, piano keyboard, <laughs> which well, I thought was pretty appropriate. There. And as we're going down, we went by uh, Shag Rock. Um, this is the South Georgia Shag, which is endemic to uh, South Georgia. And this is a supply ship that goes down to South Georgia Island. South Georgia Island is sort of a, an independent, but it's part of the Falklands. 
under British control. And this again is our um, a, 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 yeah, our cozy quarters. You know, this is my area here. <laughs> Somebody didn't come in and clean up for him. Yeah. yeah. And we'll show you. We're at two days on the ship here, so we'll show you some of the inside ship things. This is our dining room here. They had a morning buffet, and the food was uh, quite good, quite abundant, and very well done. This was the the bar. Uh, they'd had specials every night, which were good. But also, if you went before breakfast, they would give you, uh, they would make up fresh uh, fruit smoothies. So, for you. So, it, and everybody was really, this is uh, Bruce, who was uh, an artist in residence. He's from England, part of the Royal Society. And he is a pretty funny guy. So, we're going from Port Stanley, and we're going to the outside to the eastern side of South Georgia Island. <coughs> to And where we're going to is we're going to Gritviken here. And then some of the other places we're going to is Jason's Harbor, Stromness Bay, and um, to Salisbury Plain will be another place that we'll go to. Yep. Okay, this is uh, Grit Viken, South Georgia, and this is just spectacular. This is a, uh, you come in, um, there's a, a naval or research station as you come here, but then as you get in, start coming to the town, it's all the, the ruins of the old, um, the whaling factories and the, the whaling industry. And, whoops, sorry. Uh, no, this is early spring, so uh, yeah, it was October, November. So this is probably April, May. Yeah, for them, and which is, which is early. We were, like I said, we were quite often the first sh bigger uh, ship to come into port with them. And actually, this was one of two other boats that we saw. This was a small little boat with about five people, but just a, a, a private boat that was down there. Okay. Yep. And this is our, the southern uh, elephant seals here. And these are the females with uh, young here. Yep. And they, our kayakers had come in and were kayaking around the bay here. And one of the big features of Gritviken is Shackleton's grave. So as you're coming in, you can see all the uh, elephant seals here and then the cemetery up here. And this is his grave right here, up here. And the tradition is that when you first get on the island, you go up to the grave site. And for us, it was uh, Johnny Walker Red. And we, uh, everybody did a toast, and you, th you drink half your drink, and you throw the other half onto the grave. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was a very, um, I, I think almost everybody on board had read about Shackleton and um, his exploits, and you know, were really sort of connoisseurs of what he had done. So this was really one of the highlights for several of us. This is the, the Whalers Church, along with the, the whaling operation here. And then these are, so there, there's, a, th this is actually probably a young, young male. You can see he's been in a lot of fights here. And the males uh, really fight over the females pretty, uh, pretty exhaustively. This is a, a baby elephant seal. And then these are the uh, Antarctic, uh, southern Ant or Antarctic fur seals, which are actually beautiful little animals. And they were considerably smaller at this point. This is a, this is a young one. And then we saw our first uh, king penguins. And they're in the process of shedding, and we'll see quite a bit of this. But they have two layers of feathers. They have a, um, a downy layer, 
which is underneath, and then they have a, a layer of feathers above it, which is pretty oily, which is waterproof. So the water never or shouldn't touch their skin. You know, and, that, and that's how they can survive in these uh, very cold waters. How tall? Uh, yeah, about like this. I think the emperor penguins are bigger. And there were, and they have found bones of ones that were about this high. Yeah. Yeah. In the old, old not yeah. recent times. No. Oh, yeah. 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 And these are uh, yellow-billed uh, pintails. It's a uh, South Georgia uh, subspecies. Of course, I, I, I really like the ducks, so I concentrate on them. Uh, this is an old uh, whaling ship here with a harpoon on the front. And up here, they, they literally have a barrel on the top of the, of the mast for the lookout. Yeah. On this, uh, in this location, we could walk, not in the buildings, but we could walk around pretty close to them. Some of the other ones we weren't able to. But we were talking about whalebone earlier. This is a whale vertebrae, and you know the span is probably about this long here, from here to here. And they're just piles of uh, whalebone. <laughs> then there's a museum there, and this is the uh, the wandering albatross, and there's a a, a colony of them, <coughs> a, rook, a rookery of them on, on South Georgia that we ended up not being able to go to. But you can see that that whole wingspan went from floor to ceiling. And this is a, uh, a replica of the boat that Shackleton <coughs> took from Elephant Island over to South Georgia. And he came into Stromness Bay. And this is still in the same, har same harbor as uh, Grid Picken. And here we are, this is that uh, research station I was saying that you come into, you pass this to get to the look down here. I wanted to get a picture of the British flag and looking over onto the, uh, onto the church. And then we went to uh, Jason Harbor, where there was a uh, big colony of the uh, elephant seals. And this guy was all by himself up in the, um, up sort of in the dunes or in the, you know, in the area off the beach, and he was feeling pretty poorly because he'd just been beaten up by the by the beach master. There's a uh, there's one elephant seal that controls the beach, and he is called the beach master. And all the females are his females. So if some young guy like this guy tries to challenge him, you know, if if he wins, great, and if he doesn't, he gets beat up pretty good. So here we are, and they had um, they put little rescue huts in a lot of the different harbors. So if somebody did come come ashore or were, were wrecked or something happened, they would have at least some provisions and some way to maybe survive through. Yeah. Another little fur seal here. Here's here's that. One seal that we had, or the uh, the elephant, one that we had before, with all of us looking at him, probably making him feel even worse. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the jackets were provided by One Ocean. That's that's why we're all wearing the same jackets. And then this is one of our lectures or stories. And actually, Bruce is uh, telling a story of when he was a young man. He just graduated from Cambridge, and he had done a research project with the wandering uh, albatross, and they were tagging them, and they'd, I guess it was a, something that had gone on for several years, and there was one that had fallen out of the nest and broken both wings, and he told the story how they ended up eating it the last day. Yeah, and, and this is Kathy's birthday. <laughs> And somebody came in a penguin suit and 
But, and, and the thing is that this company, One Oceans, also um, will go up to Baffin Island and um, in, in, in you know, the North Atlantic. Uh, and I, I, I bet up there that that's a puffin suit. <laughs> then we went to one of my favorite places, which was Salisbury Plains. And it says here 100,000 king penguins. There were literally 100,000 king penguins. We're just, this is just one little section of a, um, probably a 200 degrees that we could look. Behind us, there weren't very many. But you can see them even up into the hills here. here. I think and it's, the, it's the largest king penguin colony in the world. OK. Susan uh, Drennan just says, largest king penguin colony in the world. And these are, um, th these are the babies. And king penguins don't uh, reproduce every year. About, uh, they come and in early November, they'll pair up, they'll lay an egg, and after 30 days or something, the egg will hatch. Another 40 days, it will be able to have enough fur and enough feathers on it. That it, can, that it can survive. It can't go in the water. The parents start going back and forth feeding it. And, um, and it isn't until 13 or 14 months that these guys actually start growing their feathers, their, their protective outer feathers, so they can actually go back into the water. So the king penguins have two babies every three years which I thought was interesting. How'd that smell, Gary? Um, it was early we, in the we, season, we, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, we, we were not in the smelly season. There, uh, <laughs> yeah, there are times that- They hadn't uh, pooped for three months. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, we've had people talk about you know, coming back about having uh, been there on a reasonably warm day at the end of the season, and I guess it's pr pr pretty dreadful, but. Yeah, and, and we were able to climb up, if you can go back one, Karen. Oh, it looks great for you. Yeah, we were up on a, a dune here, so you could get a little bit better view of them. But there are also, we're standing here, and they're going back and forth here. There was a pond behind us. This is our ship in the background. That's a great picture, because you can see them all too. That's a penguin that won't go in the water for a couple of weeks. Was it yeah. noisy? Would they make a lot of yeah. Yes. Oh, it's very noisy. And the adults Good are shedding, are molting also, so that's why they don't go in the water. They're on the beach growing their new feathers. So he, here we have some severe uh, molting here. Yeah, I'm not sure how far out they go. I, that's a good question. Do you have any idea, Susan, on that, how far they go out? How far out they have to go to get food? Oh, the king penguins have to go out very far, usually a half a mile. Half a mile? Ha half a mile. To a mile sometimes at the biggest feeding sites. We're, we're deferring to Susan Drennan here on some of these questions. Susan She's has been, a, has been a, a guide and a tour leader in Antarctica. So and this is how, you know, you're not supposed to get within five feet of them, but they yeah, they don't follow the rule anyways. And then the, this is a mother protecting her baby. The, the sheath bill isn't going to hurt them or anything. And these are ones that I think have just gotten their new feathers maybe or just coming in, but they would come in <coughs> just in waves of them. It was just, it was really pretty spectacular. Then we're uh, back on the boat. Oh, this is a, uh, you know, this is just still different views from um, offshore on uh, South Georgia Island. You can see how absolutely steep it is here. Then we went um, to Stromness Bay, and this house here, uh, there's a white house, and that's the superintendent's house. And when Shackleton came down from over the over the, over the mountain, that's where he went. And this is, uh, and, and this is, a, it was a pretty windy day here. This is an area you can't, these are the don't go any further signs basically. And they used a lot of asbestos 
in these buildings, and there's also with the wind, there's a chance of getting hurt with the uh, with the, uh, the metal flying off. Yeah. That's the old that's the old whaling bay. Right. Yep. It's a big whaling bay. And then this is Shackleton Falls, so this is the the path that he took down. A uh, new turn for us, the Antarctic turn. And this is a um, common diving petrel, and it had come and landed or hit on the boat at night. Yeah. And so it, they do it, they put it in a box, get it settled down, and, they, uh, and the next night they would uh, put it out again. Because if you put it out during the day when it's dazed, it's going to become food for somebody else. So this is just an example of how cold it can be. And this is the, um, you know, for the kayaking gear. And these are the kayakers heading out. We decided not to do the kayaking because we wanted to concentrate more on the birds. And, but it was, you know, it, it's a great option for a lot of people to do. The people that did it really enjoyed it. We went to uh, Godthold Bay Harbor, and we went to a Gen 2 colony here. And this is a real Valentine's Day here, I think. And they got and they these Gen 2 penguins are just just great. They look great. Oh, and they um, they're pink under the wings. And that's when they get too hot. The blood Absolutely. comes closer to the surface to help cool them down. That's when you get the pink blotches. Yeah. And again, there's a lot of uh, nest stealing and nest building. That's, that seems to be there. Caught in the act. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it was just, the scenery there was just so, so beautiful. And there was a picture earlier of the beach and it's just covered with whale bones, that whole whole area. And this is the uh, southern Georgia pipit. South. So, uh, yeah, south Georgia uh, pipit. And this, uh, this bird is uh, great because it's the southernmost passerine in the world. It's endemic to uh, south Georgia and was severely threatened for quite a while. And the last few, maybe 15 years, they've done a tremendous job in getting rid of uh, rats basically. And the problem now is that they have certain hard places where the glaciers come down into the water and the rats don't cross the glaciers. So if they can kill them off in the different, they can kill them off like a part at a time. And the problem is if we get glo more global warming and it, the glaciers go back, then the rats will be able to run all over the island. So we ended up seeing maybe probably 12 or 15 of those in the time we're on the island. Whereas it used to be that if you saw it, two or three, yeah? Did the rats come after um, people? Off ships. Yes, off ships. ships. Yeah, yeah, they're not from the. Reindeer they're, were imported, but they got rid of them. Yeah, because they were just they were just eating too much vegetation and changing. And, and they, uh, they, whaling companies were mostly run by Norwegians and they thought that that would be a good sport for them and plus meat for them. What? Oh, no, no, th 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 this is a uh, antler from a, uh, a reindeer. This is a picture that Kathy I even took. took a picture. <laughs> and then the camera with my phone. Yeah. Then we're back uh, going along the shoreline here, and then we're going to a place called Gold Harbor. And Gold Harbor is just a, a great mixture of every everything. Just seems sort of squashed together here with king penguins, gentoo penguins, uh, skuas, uh, southern giant petrels. And the skua is the one that's a predator <coughs> or that predates 
the eggs and the baby penguins. Yeah. Yeah. That brown. That is and you had we had to walk away from the elephant field. I mean, they can be pretty violent. Yeah, they can. Yeah. And this is a elephant seal who's getting too hot, so he's using his flippers to flip the sand up on his back. And these are the uh, skuas in the water here. Yeah, you can see what a big snout that can you if you go back one. Yeah. You can see what a big snout this guy has here. We saw a lot of elephant seals because it was their mating season. Yeah. People who come later in the season wouldn't have seen, these wouldn't have been here. They'd be out, back out in the water. And this, I, I, I don't know if you've seen on Discovery Channel where the penguins are going through the seals and stuff. Right? It actually happens. These are four of them and they get there and then these are gentoo penguins doing the same thing, but they sort of walk along and you know, it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle for them trying to, or a maze trying to figure out how to, how to get back. And they don't always stay really clean either. They, they can get pretty dirty. Yeah, and here's another good example of, this was a hotter day here, of the pink under the, under the wing. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's almost like they ordered the wrong size bathtub. <laughs> you know, but, but, but I'm going to make this work. You know. Yeah, this was actually, there was a dead um, elephant seal baby. And that happens with some regularity uh, with the, the males fighting with the beach master because he charges down the beach and he'll actually run over other things to get rid of the of the other male. I thought that was sort of fun. And then this is a glacier in the back here. Yeah. This is a guy that just made it through the maze. This is a little bit better shot of the skua here. The definitive mark when you see them from a distance is that white. Um, it's not. It's not that big. Maybe. This big. Yeah. Max. Max. Yeah. And this is the. Uh, king penguins in this little melt stream here and it's it's just covered with feathers it's like a um, a river of feathers just from all their shedding and this is where we were going back to get on the boat and while we were in there the uh, the wind really picked up coming on to shore and there were uh, some of the staff got pretty wet and were sitting there taking their boots off and pouring water out of it. And then when we got on, um, got on back onto the ship, they had hot chocolate for us with uh, uh, Oh yeah, yeah, that, there was some alcohol there too. Yeah, I, I remember that. And, and then we were, um, all of our wet equipment, we sort of lined up in the hallway going down to the uh, rooms. Uh, Final this is a, a Dragalski uh, uh, fjord, and this is a, this was actually one of my the snow petrel is pure white. It's abs absolutely gorgeous little bird. We went down; it was very windy. We couldn't land, and this was the beginning of five days on the ship without getting off. We had very poor weather. They give you an itinerary of what's, what you're going to see and where you're going to go, and then they say subject to weather conditions and they're very serious about the uh, safety of people and the crew and so they I, I don't think they ever put us in anything that we would consider to be even close to unsafe. So this is a big glacier on the southern tip and then we're at sea. Yeah this is Antarctic petrol a little bit different. <coughs> So what we're here, this is the Scotia Sea, 
we're going down here and we're going, we're, we're planning to land on Elephant Island. We didn't land on it. But from Elephant Island to South Georgia, that's where Shackleton went. I think it's over, it's over 1,200 miles. Yeah. 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 And this is uh, Elephant Island. We took a picture and we had hoped to land. Had hoped to land. And the place that the rest of his crew spent the winter was like, in, like a little place like right here, just right on the shore. It just looks like the, the last place you'd want to spend any time at all at. When we were there, we saw uh, fin whales and some other penguins. The whales were, we were there early in the season, so they were not, not there in numbers. You know, they, they, if we were there a month later, there, we probably would have seen 20 times as many whales, but, but we didn't. This is a captain who was Russian, a Russian crew. Yep. why we didn't land. <laughs> the waves that, were breaking over the top of the ship. Yeah, we figured they were breaking over 40 feet above. You know, they were, we were in the, um, you know, in the bridge, and it was breaking way over the bridge. Then we had Halloween. Halloween. And, and this was the winning co costumes. Uh, this couple from uh, Australia, they, they went as elephant seals. <laughs> I, was a, I was a pirate. <laughs> And it, it looks like I might have had a little grog before I <laughs> did that. Uh, Antarctic fur seal. We're getting down on the Antarctic Peninsula at this point. And, I, and you can see here where we really weren't seeing the snow down at the sea level. Here, it's sort of all snow. And this is the early part of this, the very early part of the season. So what's happening now is that the penguins are coming back and they're starting to compete for nest sites. And this is that showed some of the uh, some of the wash and frozen. And it's uh, a kayak has never got into kayak. It seems like every picture <laughs> no, got that. Right. <laughs> <kayak behind it. laughs> we didn't pay attention to it. <laughs> <one minute off. laughs> yeah. So what did they get on land? And then yeah, they would get on land and then. Well, they uh, would get in, They would get in the kayaks from the from the zodiacs. But but oh, they yeah. but but they would get into land first. They they would get to a safe. Make sure they had a safe harbor. Right from the zodiac. They crawled into them from the zodiac. Okay. And then this is the gangplank that we went down. And every time you got off the ship, you had to check out, and every time you checked in to make sure we were all accounted for. And this is a portal point. This was our this was our first landing, <laughs> and this was sort of to get our our feet wet. This was the first place we, uh, after five days, that we could land. We were very anxious to get off the boats. People in red suits on white feet, white yeah. suits and snow. Were you actually on land? Then? Yes, no. we were. Yeah, we no, were on. Some of, some of it we were on sea ice. ice. Yeah, sea ice. but on that we were on land. Yeah. And this is the Antarctic shag, and the picture's not really good. It has the prettiest blue eyes, just strikingly blue eyes. And there is quite a tide here. You know, oh, not quite, but maybe uh, five or six feet. They used to be named the blue eyes shag. Oh, oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. And, th and then we went to Wilhelmina Bay. This iceberg here was about three miles long, and that's about 80 feet high. It was just huge. Okay, what's the temperature now? Uh, this was on the water, so we were probably right around around zero at that point. It, it, zero it was, centigrade, it, or zero Fahrenheit. Zero, no, it's zero <laughs> centigrade. No. We're right about freezing. <laughs> yeah. And the penguin arrived again with uh, hot chocolate and stuff. But it, it, was, it was pretty cold, the, the air coming off these uh, bergs. Do they have any kind of like southern lights or like the northern lights down there? We never heard anything about that. I, I, I don't know the answer. I, I never heard anything on it. Well, they have the southern lights in South America. Down in the Antarctic. Okay, so this is our. Never gets dark enough. This is our breakfast buffet here, and we didn't have assigned tables, so people were very good about mixing and matching, and you know, you got to know everybody that was on the uh, trip. 
is Arne Harbor. And this was interesting. If you look here, there are just a couple of rocks, and you, and you can see these nice little channel where we came in. And we climbed up, and this is the first place that we saw a, a uh, chin strap uh, penguin. The what? What would winter conditions be like? Uh, don't ask. Winter. Um, Pretty brutal. It, 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 would, it would probably be a lot windier and a lot, you know. And, and, it's the driest continent on Earth, so it's yeah. really dry, cold. It would probably be 30 or 40 degrees oh, colder. Yeah. yeah. And we went up in here. We'd climbed quite a bit, probably um, elevation three or four hundred feet and then we went up another probably eight hundred feet when we go to the next slide here. So there's this big hill here and it was very on the other side of this and it kept going up and up and up and it was I think it was like um, close to three thousand feet to the top and the year before a, um, a group of adventure uh, travelers came and rock climbed up the back side of it you know, all safely, they got to the top, and there was a Gen 2 penguin there. <laughs> what the penguins are trying to do is they're trying to get to the highest place that will melt the quickest. Then they can have their nest and eggs for the longest time. So they will go up and sit on the snow above a rock where they want their nest and wait for it to melt, and then they will then they'll do their nesting. These guys were... Um, Debogging, and they were debogging up the hill, and they used their feet and their and and their uh, wings. And remember, I showed you the little piece of uh, of, uh, of uh, rock. Now the uh, tide has gone out, so we had to leave here fairly quickly before we All were. The ice was blowing into our landing site. Yeah. But it was pretty. Uh, Pretty amazing to be out there and just have just all that white and all these beautiful structures. You got the zodiac through the ice. Yeah. Yep, and this is uh, Cooverville, where there was another uh, big penguin colony. And these are the Gentoo penguins again. You can see the. Yeah, that isn't fur, those are penguins. And when we start looking, if you start looking a little bit closer, you can see that they are sort of paired up. And it's funny, if you saw this picture here, you'd think, oh, Gen 2 penguins are white. And that's just because they're all walking towards us at this point. And as if they're walking towards you, you're supposed to get out of their way and not make sure you don't bother them. And this was one of the few days that we actually had sun. So we actually had some good, good light for photography. And here are a couple, you know, pairs here just, just waiting for that right opportunity to, to make their nest and start their families. This is one of my favorite pictures here. But to be in that atmosphere and have that light is just, uh, it's, it's pretty spectacular. And you can see they're already, you know, they're, they're pooping on the snow and stuff, and that will make it melt faster, and you know, then they can start their families. And it was with the sun out, and this was the first day we really had to wear uh, sun protection so we didn't get uh, snow blindness. And here are them, a couple of gentoos coming out of the water. This is a crab eater, crab eater seal and the sheath bills. We're out in the Zodiac doing a little tour. This is some uh, blacker ice that, you know, probably thousands and thousands of years old that has finally come in as an as a iceberg there. These are some more of the Cape petrels here. Was the ship considered an iceberg 
No, no, it wasn't. Um, actually, we heard from our guide. We were in Guatemala last month, and our guide was up in the um, in the Arctic, and our ship went aground, and they had to have an iceberg come in, I icebreaker come in, and uh, free them up. So this is where we're going to be around here. This is the uh, Antarctic Turn again. Just, but these just beautiful rock structures. It's just it's pretty incredible. Now here, there are, there, there are a lot of the, uh, the Gen 2 penguins. Uh, you know, those, yeah, here. No, there's your chin straps. And they... Uh, but there were other ones that were climbing up here to get up on top of the rocks. Yeah. This was our Christmas card, actually. And then this is uh, Kevin, who's the only macaroni penguin that we saw on the whole trip. He, uh, Kevin has been coming to that colony for seven years. Hasn't found a mate. Hasn't found a mate that works yet. But, uh, Poor Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> But he's probably the most photographed penguin in Antarctica. <laughs> this is the uh, Waddell uh, seal with the uh, spots on it. This is the, uh, the crab eaters. This is uh, Waddell's here. This is a southern giant petrel. And they have the, yeah. But j just being able to be there, it's like it's like Discovery Channel live. You know, you're just walking around and and this is a uh, a research station uh, that Argentina has there, and they might have three people spend a week there every two years or something. It's basically not used. This is a ice boat here. And they had uh, boats that would, they would go out and get uh, ice off some of the icebergs and bring it back and melt it for water. Where we were was not where all the research stations were. I'm going to slow down a little bit, Kathy. Oh, we did a uh, polar plunge. Oh. Did you stay in long? No, no. I it, had to stay on land to do the photograph. Yeah. <laughs> somebody's got, somebody's somebody got to do that, that job. And, and when I came back in, I, you know, after I'd gotten some things on, I went back to the shore, and this Gen 2 penguin came up and stood beside me, and it, he looked up at me, and it was almost like he said, I, I saw you in there, and it, 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 it wasn't pretty. Yeah. And then he turned around, and, 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 and he showed me how to do it here. So, so maybe the next time I can maybe learn something from him. Okay, and now we're, uh, we're headed home at this point. So Great passage. Yeah, this is Drake. It's supposed to be notoriously awful seas, and we had very calm seas. It was delightful. Good. Yeah. And then this is Kathy's area, and this is my area. <laughs> this is some of the friends. We had we had an auction, and that th this is a, uh, a a painting that Bruce had done. He did it on a big map, and then filled in all around it with watercolor painting during the trip. Yeah. And it, well, they had a big auction and for charity for the island area. And my friend wanted to see what the patch was like, so he, he borrowed my patch. And the money that was raised by that uh, auction was for the r research in Antarctica. Gary donated some of his ornaments. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is the uh, gray-headed albatross. Yeah. And then this is uh, Cape Horn. And this is a uh, statue they have. Well, it's spring-like. These, these people are filmmakers, and if you've seen the uh, picture of the wildebeest where he's down drinking water and then a big crocodile, oh, yeah. 
or, or alligator, uh, crocodile. That's, that's their film. And they were on board and did um, presentations about their filmmaking for BBC and National Geographic. Yeah. Neil and Karen, I don't have any idea what their last name is. <laughs> yeah. And then we're back in, we back in Ushuaia. Yeah. Well, the Imperial Shag was a new one for us as we came in the harbor. Yeah, look at this on the uh, southern lap wing with the... No, spurs. They're, spurs. they're spurs. What are they using for? Um, when they fighting? When they have fights. Oh, okay. Susan says they're for uh, fighting. Well, they're, yeah. And there's your black crowned night heron. That's the last of our boat, our ship, I mean. And the end. <laughs> so. Thank you. You mean the length of the? No, just the body of the it's, it's a lot of wing and not much body. Yeah. yeah, because they'll they'll fly for months. So like right? the body would be like a loon size or a goose size or uh, a seagull. Yeah, long, long and like a, Yeah. And we saw one wandering albatross yeah. out over the ocean, uh, and it didn't even look that big because the perspective on the ocean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's much bigger than any other seabird. How long was the trip? Thank you. Nineteen days on the on the boat, and we spent uh, three different nights in Ushuaia. So, so it's, it's been yeah. yes, George. Any uh, signs of climate change and how it's affecting habitat? Um, we, you know, we hadn't been down there before, but they said that. The melt in some of the places where the penguins were, they um, it, the rocks were being exposed earlier and earlier. And the problem is that if there isn't enough uh, ice and bergs and stuff along the shore, then the predator seals and things can just get further and further and further in and be more of a problem. Yeah. Well, great. Well, well, you guys can uh, convene and uh, we'll answer yeah. questions. Well, thank you all for coming. I really thank appreciate you. it.